In this After Effects tutorial, we will create a space mountain scene. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So we have another inspired Quartz Gazagat tutorial and we are going to create this scene right here. In our previous course, Scott Zagat tutorial, we did a mountain landscape scene and we're continuing this series on his style of motion graphics. So if you guys have any requests for his videos, please uh, find the title of the video that you want and give me the time frame of the animation that you guys would like me to do a tutorial on. So anyway, let's get started for this tutorial. Let's go right into our new comp here. I already have a composition here called Tut. I already put a background in here. It's a little bit, bit of a dark blue background, but let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the ellipse tool, which is here at the top, and we're going to click a point and hold down command and shift on a Mac and just draw out a perfect circle like this. And that's a uh, control and shift on a PC and just a very small circle like that. And we're going to go to the fill here and change this color to white. And we're going to rename this uh, layer to star. And then we're going to go up to uh, layer new solid. And we're going to title this one uh, Star Particles. So if we want to create like a starry background like this, we can come here and just duplicate this a thousand times. But I think that's kind of counterproductive and you're setting yourself up for more work just in case if you want to change parameters later. What we're, what we're going to do is go up to Effect uh, Simulation and we're going to use the CC Particle World Effect and make sure that's on your Star Particles layer. And we're going to just scrub through here maybe move this timeline or this layer forward in time so these particles will all automatically be up. And we're going to replace these particles with our star layer down here. So we're going to go down to the particle here and we're going to change the particle type to a textured tri-polygon. And we're going to go down to the texture uh, drop down right here and go to the texture layer and we're going to set this down to star. And let's hide our star layer and let's go right back into these settings here. And let's go to the birth size. Let's set this down to maybe a two and the depth size down to two. So now we're starting to see some of our particles in here. If we scrub through here, we're gonna have, we have a lot of crazy animation and we, this is really quick to fix. So let's go right into our physics and let's set the velocity down to zero, the gravity to zero, and also the extra to zero as well. And you know, so far we have not much going on here. We have a few, uh, a little bit more animation that's going on here, but let's open up the producer. And let's go to the uh, radius X and just increase this to go all the way across and also the radius Y as well. And set the radius Z down to zero. And if we scrub through here some more, we still got some rotation going on. So we're gonna go back down to the particle and where it says rotation speed, set that to zero. And also the initial rotation to zero as well. And now we have all of these uh, star particles facing towards us. Now it's kind of just flickering in the background and that's because of the longevity. So set the longevity up to like 10. And we're gonna have a ton of stars over here because of the birth rate. So the birth rate is set at two. Let's add a keyframe for that and move forward by one frame and set the birth rate down to zero. So now if we scrub through here, none of the particles will uh, you know, generate on. So what we might wanna do is just move this uh, layer forward in time just by a little bit and just go ahead and stretch that back end of our layer there. So now we have constant particles that are gonna be up here for about 10 seconds. Of course, you can increase that by whatever number you wanna do. If you wanna do 20 seconds, of course, you can do that as well. And then we need to go to the max opacity and set that to 100%, that's underneath the particle tab. And we'll go to the size variation. You can keep that at 50% or you can set it to 100% and you'll get some really small particles and obviously some bigger particles here. But I'm gonna keep it at 50%. And if we really want, we could always uh, go back down to the birth rate by clicking the little uh, arrows here. And maybe we can set the birth rate down to one. And we see we have less particles. Maybe we'll do like 0.5. And this is just a really great way to control how many particles you're gonna have on here without actually having to duplicate like 2D layers, which would have been kind of a mess. So now we kind of have control over how many stars we have in the scene. And for the most part, this is just fine for me. Of course, you can play with the birth and death size. Make sure those are always equal so the, uh, so the stars don't grow. And if you don't like the layout of your uh, stars here, you can go down to the extras and you can just play with the random C to get kind of a position that you like. So now that our stars are done, we can go up to layer new camera. And I'm using the 50 millimeter preset, click OK. And we can come here, open up the camera properties, go to the beginning of your timeline and you know, go right into the transform properties, add a keyframe for the Z rotation, go to the end of your animation, which mine, mine's gonna be five seconds. 
and just increase the Z rotation just by a little bit. And this will kind of look, may, uh, make it look like the Earth is rotating or whatever planet you're on, the, you know, the night sky is rotating and you know, your planet's turning. So that's a pretty subtle animation there. And then we can close that up. We're done there. And let's go ahead and create a moon. So same thing, grab the ellipse tool, just like creating a star here, grab the ellipse tool, just draw out a perfect circle, kind of like the size like this. You know, it could be as big as you want or small, doesn't matter. And we're gonna go right into the contents here and we're gonna duplicate ellipse one and we'll go right into the uh, transform properties and we'll scale this one down and we'll change the color of the fill to be kind of see uh, what's going on here. Uh, you know, maybe we'll just shrink this down a little bit more and then we can come here and just position this wherever we want and we can just do this a few more times. We're kind of creating the craters of a moon and we're just creating some variation in here. And then, you know, continue just to duplicate these and, you know, we'll be right back. Okay, so now that I have the craters on my moon, let me rename this layer to moon. And let's add some outer glow to this moon layer. And we'll grab the ellipse one, which is the main uh, solid of the moon here, or the main, say, background layer of the moon. Duplicate that layer, bring it underneath our ellipse one, and go right into the uh, transform and scale this up just to be a little bit larger. And we'll go to the fill at the top here and we can change the color to maybe like a, you know, a nice little light blue. Maybe set the opacity, go to the fill here and set the opacity down to 50%. And you know, if we want, we can maybe make this just a little bit brighter or a little bit more dense, it doesn't really matter. And then once again, we will duplicate the ellipse seven here, bring it underneath and we'll change the fill color right back down to uh, white and we'll go into the transform and we'll go ahead and continue to scale this up and maybe set the opacity down to 20%. So now we kind of have the outer glow of the moon, you know, that looks pretty cool. And then what we can do here is position our moon anywhere we want, you know, maybe we'll start it off down here. And if we turn on uh, our 3D layer right here, if we scrub through here, you'll see that the moon will automatically animate in our night sky, which I think is really awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna create some mounting. So grab the pen tool at the top and zoom out of your comp here. And let's come here, click a point, and you're just gonna create some like triangles almost. And you're just gonna go back and forth here. Just create some, you know, pointy shapes, kind of like this. And this will kind of just be the outline of our mountains. And when you're done with your shapes here, make sure just to close this up at the bottom down here. And we can come here and change the fill color to maybe just like a nice dark blue since we're doing a night sky and it fits our palette. And if these, if your mountains are not, uh, you know, straight up like mine are, what you can do to fix this is go into the shape layer, go into the contents, go into the shape, open the path and make sure to select the path. And then, and now you can come in here and just click very specific points in here and you just make them straight kind of manually like this. It's not the most effective way to do this. Like typically you would just design this sort of thing in Illustrator, but we're doing this in After Effects. Then there's our first layer of mountains. We named the layer to uh, mountain. And then if you want to create another set of mountains, once again, you just grab the pen tool and do your next layer of mountains. Okay, so our next layer of mountains is done and I just made it the color just a little bit lighter than our dark blue here. And for the most part, if we scrub through here, you know, we're looking pretty good. And if we want to add a building in here, and I've created tons of vector videos, and of course you guys can always check those out. I'll have those links in the description of this video. But there's this great website, freepix.com, that allows you to download free vectors. And I typed in observatory and I found this building here and I downloaded it and put it into Illustrator. It's a free vector. And all I did in Illustrator was just, you know, isolate the building from everything. And I took the telescope here and I separated that into its own layer so we can animate this easily inside of After Effects. So once this all, was all done, I saved it up and I went right into After Effects and I imported my uh, project file, which is right over here. I'll import that for you guys. And of course, when it says import kind, go ahead and select composition and then click okay. And if we double click this observatory two here and we can grab our layer two here, we can rename this to scope. And we can grab the pan behind tool at the top here and we can go down here and put the anchor point like right on the wheel here. And then we hit R on our keyboard for rotation. And as you can see, it'll kind of just rotate right on that wheel. And we can alt click the stopwatch here and type in wiggle, open parenthesis, 0.5 comma 20, close parenthesis. And automatically we'll have some animation for this telescope without doing any effort. And be sh make sure to turn on motion blur for these layers and at the top here. And we go back to our main tut 
and we can grab the observatory composition, bring it into our uh, comp here, uh, turn on the vector icon right here and hit S ring keyboard, bring up the scale, scale it down and put it into a nice uh, place within your scene. And you know, there you have a building and a full night scene. And finally, make sure to turn on motion blur for the layers inside this comp and you should be ready to go. And after a quick render, this is what we have. And that's how you set up a nice little uh, nighttime spacey sort of scene. And it's set up for pretty much anything because you can always add like 3D objects in here and it'll automatically rotate with the sky. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please be sure to hit me up with my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I hope you have a good day.